What's going on, y'all? This is Brandon, aka the Port City Attorney. Today, we're going to be blind reacting to some clips from AE TV titled Top Sovereign Citizen Moments Part 3. Let's get after it. First up, we're in Dayton Municipal Court in Ohio for a bench trial. Judge Mia Spells presiding. 55-year-old Anthony Matthews has been charged with driving on a suspended license. Just a quick note, a uh, bench trial just means that there is no jury, that the judge is going to be the trier of fact, and they're going to render a decision. You can have a bench trial or a jury trial. Matthews considers himself a sovereign citizen, someone who believes that certain laws don't apply to him. And as the trial begins, it's clear that he's not planning on playing by the rules. Sovereign citizens are hilarious, but... If you've dealt with them firsthand, they can also be very frustrating. Uh, so these clips are going to be funny, but they're probably going to make you cringe as well. I regret that you dismissed this matter. By the way, Daryl Brooks saw himself as a sovereign citizen, and I think that's where most of these cases are going to go today. Matthews has already filed several motions aimed at challenging the court's authority over him, but the judge isn't swayed. Let me explain to you the rules here in the court. Let me explain to you the rules of the court, sir. I do not care to take part in fraud. Not at all. Judge Spells warns Matthews that by continuing to interrupt her, he's pushing his luck with the court. You can be found in contempt if you continue to interrupt me. We'll proceed with trial with you in abstention, sir, and we're going to find you in contempt. What I'm going to do is give you. I'm getting flashbacks from the Daryl Brooks trial. You're interrupting the proceedings of the court, sir, and it is direct contempt. It is direct contempt, and we're going to take you into custody, sir. We will give you a hearing, and we'll have the hearing. We will find counsel for you. As deputies close in on Matthews, tensions reach a boiling point. Just turned contempt into a new charge for assaulting a government official. Not a great way to go. As Matthews squares off against the deputy, two off-duty police officers in the jury box get up to help detain him. One of them throws several punches at Matthews. As Judge Spells and courtroom staff clear the area. So this brings up a good question, right? Is the officer punching the defendant in this matter, could that be considered police brutality or uh, an unnecessary or unlawful use of force? Now, the question or the answer that you're always going to get from lawyers is it depends, right? I think in this situation, it's probably not some sort of brutality uh, because typically you're allowed to meet and potentially slightly exceed the force that is being used against you, right? So if someone is throwing punches at you, you are legally in self-defense allowed to throw punches back. You could probably even escalate that a little bit, but you're always going to be good if you just meet the force that is being met against you. That is why whenever people say, you know, someone's got a knife and a cop shot them, that it was a unnecessary escalation of force when that's not the case, because that is deadly force, right? A knife is deadly force. So deadly force being met by deadly force is always going to work out. So that dude throwing the cop throwing punches at the guy, uh, it's probably not going to be any sort of excessive use of force because he's just meeting the uh, the level of of harm that is being thrown at him, basically. More deputies pile into the courtroom as Matthews is taken to the ground. In total, six people are involved in taking Matthews down. A little bit of jujitsu go a whole long way. I think all departments should have some sort of combatives or jujitsu requirements with their annual training. After several minutes and two pairs of handcuffs, Matthews is escorted out of the courtroom. The following day, Matthews appears again before Judge Spells to answer for the contempt of court charge. He's still representing himself, 
But this time, he has a new attitude. Yesterday proceed was an error on my behalf. I take full blame for my The court believes the conduct of Mr. Matthews severely threatened the integrity of the court and its proceedings and such that immediate action was necessary. Judge Spell sentenced Matthews to a year of probation and time served for both the driving on a suspended license and contempt of court charges. Well, the contempt of court charges, that, that doesn't go into that year of probation, I wouldn't think. But um, I'm surprised they didn't charge him with any other crimes. But he was also charged with two counts of assault on a peace officer and one count of obstructing official business as a result of his scuffle with the court deputies and other court officials. I spoke too soon. He remains free awaiting trial on those charges. That's not going to be a very long trial um, when you have that kind of footage. Um, you know, maybe they have some sort of argument for diminished capacity because, uh, you know, he was not interacting like a normal or reasonable person would. But my guess is that he's going to get convicted of those charges. Yeah. <laughs> We're in Eureka, Montana, and the man wearing the no hunting or trespassing sign around his neck is Ernie Tertelgen, Montana's proverbial sovereign citizen, better known as the natural living man. The 57-year-old's in court today representing himself on charges of driving with a suspended license and obstructing a peace officer during his arrest. You'll notice that more often than not, if somebody is making a sovereign citizen argument, they're going to be representing themselves uh, for one of two reasons. One being that they just don't believe that the court has any jurisdiction over them and so they can't be appointed an attorney and or they just don't trust the attorneys. I mean, I've been told when I used to do court appointed work that uh, I was a collaborator with the state just because the state paid me through the Indigent Defense Services Fund. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Or the second reason is they're so unreasonable that their attorney is allowed to withdraw um, because they just can't effectively uh, defend them because they just won't listen or, or, or won't heed their advice. But now, after Tertel get interrupted proceedings during jury selection, Judge Stormy Langston holds him in contempt of court. You are in contempt, Mr. Tertelgate. No, I'm not. Be quiet right now. You are I will have you arrested. You are in contempt of law, Stormy. You're in contempt of law. I'm standing for my Officer country's Hines. constitution, my Take country's Mr. people. Take Mr. Tertelgate into custody, please. I've been in some small counties, but I've never had a criminal court. Actually, that's a lie. No, I used to attend criminal court in a an old school cafeteria, um, and the judge sat at a table like that. So... That does happen sometimes. As security attempts to remove her delegates, town attorney Clifton Hayden keeps one of his supporters at bay. We understand. Keep your hands off of me. Keep your hands off of me. Keep your hands off of me. Clinton Hines, you are guilty of conducting a military crime on the court. I'm an officer. Just as it looks like her delegate is being escorted out, he isn't. What are we doing? Back off. Tertelgate is almost out of the courtroom when he grabs the doorway and pushes back against the officer. What are we doing? This is certainly one of those F around and find out moments. Back off. Leave me alone, Clayton. As the somewhat again, jujitsu, that officer, just throw the boots in, put your hooks in, take his back, and then you can work on putting cuffs on him. Awkward wrestling match continues. Tertel gets supporters at commentary. This man, leave me alone. Deserve this. Leave me alone. Constitutional. He hasn't done any wrong. Why has he no one been able to tell him what's wrong? He's not doing. Seriously, this is just going to become a YouTube channel where I say that we need to better train our officers uh, by getting them some sort of ground combatives uh, training so that they don't have to go to a gun every time. Why has no one been able to tell him what wrong? Back off! Are you, Are you getting, getting in it? it? I'm backing off. Respect me. Where's his backup? What is going on here? From the floor, Tertelgit continues the sovereign citizen argument that the court doesn't hold jurisdiction. This, 
A and E knew what they were doing. This 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 is looking a little sus here. When I comply, it, it will not be because contract is established. The thing about sovereign citizens they are they always conflate criminal law and contract law. I don't know why. They don't see a difference. Um, and I think it goes maybe back to a common law argument, um, but they always do that. It's very strange. One of his supporters addresses Judge Langston. Your Honor, can I ask a question without getting the hand for What is your question, sir? My question is, is what did Ernie do wrong? What did he do wrong? He's not following the procedure and was... Lord, what, are those what, are the what are the procedures? To follow. The procedures? The court has no jurisdiction. This court has never answered for one thing. At the very least, the common rules of being civil in a civil society. Can we can we hold that officer as a stand Remove my right materials. Now? All Sorry. these people hey, here. Officer, no, you don't. Listen, all these people, remove my materials. Get my hat, my constitution. Following the incident, Ernie Tertelligat was found guilty of contempt of court, but served no jail time. He was also charged with assaulting a peace officer. That case is still pending. As for his original charge of driving with a suspended license, he was also found guilty, but again served no jail time. The charge of obstructing a peace officer was dismissed. It's interesting. Interesting they took a dismissal on that. Um, my guess is that maybe the judge uh, looked back and said, well, we could have dealt with this a little bit better. Very interesting stuff, though. Uh, again, sovereign citizens are always going to have a good argument. When I say good, I mean it's good entertainment. <laughs> Next, we go to a preliminary hearing in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The defendant is 38-year-old Gregory Parker. He's been charged with reckless endangerment, driving with a revoked license, resisting arrest, and a number of other charges. Four months earlier, Parker was driving on a Tennessee highway when state trooper Dale Herring clocked him going 91 miles per hour in a 65 zone. Some broad, 18 miles an hour, at stoplight. After a couple of miles, Parker comes to a stop at a traffic light. He's also been live streaming the incident over social media. Well, I'm being pulled over. Got a Tennessee Highway Patrol behind me. Listen, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer. Uh, if you are potentially committing a crime, please do not stream it. Please. Doesn't help. The officer approaches the vehicle, and he's all business. Get out of the vehicle! Get out now! Get out of the vehicle now! Get out of the vehicle now! Herring's in no mood for conversation. Get out of the vehicle now! Get out of the vehicle now! Emergency! Why are you charging on me? What's the problem? You have any weapons on you? What's the problem? Put that cell phone down. I mean, I'm really surprised he doesn't have a gunpoint. I'm sure there are some factors at play as to why that's not the case, but very strange. Why are you doing this? Put your hands behind your back. What's the emergency? I'm not saying that I advocate for the gun to be out, but typically in this situation, uh, you would see that the officer would have his firearm drawn. I'm glad that he took it to the ground instead of doing that, um, but very strange. What crime have I committed? You didn't stop. I was trying to find a safe place to pull off, brother. You didn't stop. You passed up plenty. The officer brings Parker to his feet, gives him the news. Hey, you're under arrest. Do you have a warrant for my arrest? You're under arrest. For what? For not stopping. Parker was arrested and released on $60,000 bond. He arrives at his preliminary hearing with his camera rolling. Of course he does. Let's go, Gregory. And things are off to a rough start. Go that way. Go that way. Don't be pushing on me. Go this way. Why are you assaulting me? Get your hands off of me. Sir, get up. Move out the way. I didn't like to sit with this bull in here. Don't be pushing me around. Before I cross this bar, I waive no rights and I retain all my rights. Parker barely acknowledges the authority of the court or the judge. His legal arguments are ones commonly used by sovereign citizens, a group who believe certain laws don't apply to them. Do you I don't have, have an attorney. attorney. I okay. have no legal. The judge provides Parker with a public defender, 
will act only as an armchair attorney. Parker will handle the questioning of Officer Herring himself. He asks Herring a number of seemingly irrelevant questions, perhaps hoping to confuse the officer. When did you come to the determination I was driving? When I got behind you and you're behind the wheel of the vehicle. I think that's been answered, sir. You can ask your next question. Do you know the difference between driving and traveling? I'm going to object to that question because it's irrelevant under the state law. That's totally irrelevant. I'll sustain, I'll sustain the objection. You may ask your next question. Who is the victim in this situation? It always, Daryl Brooks, it always goes to who's the victim with sovereign citizens. It's, uh, Exhausting. I'm going to object to the relevance of that. Sustain. That is not relevant. You may ask your next question, sir. Finally, after realizing his tactics don't seem to be working, Parker calls it quits. I ain't playing y'all's game no more. Go ahead, do what you're doing. After hearing from both sides, the judge makes her decision on whether the case will move forward. I find that there's probable cause to believe that all these crimes were committed and they were committed by this defendant here in this county. And I will bind these cases over to the grand jury. Parker's pled not guilty and his trial is pending. If convicted on all charges, he could spend 20 years in prison. I ain't playing y'all's game no more. Here's the thing. Uh, they probably charged him with some sort of like felony flee to elude, uh, something like that, some, whatever their jurisdiction has. Those charges could be easily taken care of. I mean, if he wouldn't have live streamed it and wouldn't have made admissions and made a you know, jack wagon out of himself, he could have made the argument that he was trying to find a place to pull over and reduced it down probably to a misdemeanor. But that's not going to happen. The state's not going to want that to happen. That officer is not going to want that to happen. A little bit of courtesy goes a long way. Um, you know, you can fight for your rights in the courtroom. Don't fight for them on the street. I say that all the time. Uh, but they're going to max this guy out if they have the opportunity. Next, we're in Adrian, Michigan for a virtual sentencing hearing. The defendant is a sovereign citizen named Robert Matson who previously appeared before Judge Michael Olsaber after police found cocaine and an open alcohol container in his car during a traffic stop. His public defender negotiated a deal where Matson would plead guilty to reduce charges and be set free until sentencing. But it did not exactly go as planned. Uh, Mr. Matson, you raise your right hand, please. Hey, if I'm not gonna get out today, there's no deal. We got trial Friday, I'm just going to trial. I want to make sure that I'm going to be released, so I'm not going to take the plea today. Ultimately, Matson's lawyer convinced him to take the deal being offered that day, and he was set free on a no-fee bond. Three months later, he's back in Judge Olsaver's court for sentencing, and rather than simply hearing what his punishment is, Matson is ready to argue his case all over again. So we are on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Robert Joseph Matson. Judge, I think the, the court is making a big mistake here. Mr. Matson, we had discussed these issues and ultimately you pled guilty of your own choice. And so I'm going to sentence you on that charge today. I don't feel that I've had a fair chance. I have not rel relinquished any sovereign immunities that I have with the courts ever since I even started with the court because the court is the only one I've ever taken an oath to is God Almighty himself. One lawgiver, one creator, one judge. That's God Almighty. That's who I recognize. All right. The recommendation from your probation officer is that you serve... Uh, I'm really surprised that they're doing a sentencing hearing, allowing him to uh, proceed via Zoom or WebEx or whatever they're using because... If they send him to any sort of active time, he ain't showing up voluntarily. Uh, bold move by the court. I, I think that it doesn't look like anybody's wearing masks, so it doesn't look like it's peak COVID. This is just very interesting. One year of probation. I think under normal circumstances. And he dipped. <laughs> See ya. That would be an adequate recommendation with he's gone. <laughs> Matson has dropped out of the virtual hearing with no warning. His lawyer and a probation officer try to call him, but he's gone to a doctor's appointment. The judge has had enough. If we don't have any contact from Mr. Madison by the end of the day to finish this sentencing, I'm going to issue a bench warrant for his arrest. 
and uh, we will finish the sentencing from the Lenawee County Jail. Two hours later, Matson logs back into the virtual courtroom and the judge picks up where he left off with a couple of requests of Matson. Mr. Matson, uh, we are in a court proceeding, so I'm going to ask you not to uh, not to eat anything and to move your hood. I've had a client uh, spark up a cigarette during a virtual hearing, and I was unable to uh, text him fast enough, and the judge had to tell him to put the cigarette out. This stuff happens, uh, not just on crazy court cams. This stuff is real. Ultimately, Mr. Manson, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance at probation, which includes uh, restrictions on alcoholic beverages and substance uh, use. If you choose not to comply, then I am going to be imposing jail time. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'll just tell you now, it'll be a short leash because it will be the sentence of the court that you serve a period of probation for one year. Uh, do you understand that, Mr. Matson? Yes, I do. Judge Olsaver sends Matson to speak to the probation officer, and the matter is closed, as long as Matson follows his probation requirements. So, as we saw in the Daryl Brooks trial and through those clips from a &E TV, you can tell that sovereign citizens are an interesting group of people. They always come with some crazy stuff. They're always good for entertainment value. But please, if you're ever considering a sovereign citizen argument, do me a favor. Go to law school first. Uh, really study up on the Constitution, case law and the progression of case law throughout the decades and centuries. Uh, it'll help you a lot when you're making these arguments. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate you stopping by. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think sovereign citizens have a good argument? Or, like my hat, are they ridiculous? And do they just seek attention? Let me know in the comments what you think about the hat, too. This is now part of my personality. I'm thinking about adopting it. So, thanks for coming by. We'll see you next time.